Hello everyone and welcome to the start of not a reading vlog, but equally or even more exciting, a book shopping vlog. <laughs> That's right, I'm gonna go book shopping today and I'm gonna take you guys along with me and I am so excited. I'm meeting up with Tiernan at a nearby Barnes and Noble and we are gonna go wild. We're gonna do some book shopping. Hello Matilda. And I'm gonna document it and it's gonna be so Fun. But yeah, Tierney and I are just gonna do some shopping, get our summer reading list to its greatest place it could ever be. Just gotta get a bunch of new summer books for this summer because that is what I do as a book addict. I just buy new books to read all the time. And I'm actually really excited to say, and it's honestly like mind boggling. I'm actually partnering with Barnes and Noble and Epic Reads because they're doing a collaboration for summer reads. Barnes and Noble holds a really, really special place in my heart. My mom worked there for a long time when I was growing up. So I spent many a day after school hanging out at Barnes and Noble with my mom while she was working. And every summer my mom used to let me run around Barnes and Noble and pick out like seven, eight, nine books for the summer that she'd you know, get for me with her discount. And that's basically what I'm doing today. I'm gonna cultivate the ultimate reading, summer reading collection and haul them and buy them and show them to you. So that's the plan. Um, I'm dressed, I got these really cool new earrings, and uh, gonna head out soon, meet Tiernan at the bookstore. I'm so pumped. Millie, what kind of books do you want me to pick up for you? Any cookbooks you wanna read about? Yeah. I've made it, I've arrived at my destination. Tiernan's getting coffee, which seems like the most genius idea. I've arrived home. <laughs> I guess I could walk too. I've arrived oh. and I found Tiernan who's backlit. Yeah, I know. We were like, t I walked up and Tiernan had a coffee and I said, that is the right idea. If we're gonna do any serious book shopping, we need to be caffeinated. Yes. So we went to the Starbucks and Barnes and Noble. Oh, I've I never been wait. to this one. I've Have never you? been here either. It's, it's so beautiful outside in Chicago today. And um, this Barnes and Noble is also huge. It's way bigger than the one that's right by my house. Okay, I'm gonna drink this now. And then we'll do book shopping. <laughs> All right, it's time to get started. I'm still caffeinating, but science fiction fantasy Hello. section. Tiernan. Oh wait, it was fine the YA. I think the YA is just up over here. More. Oh my God, thing. look how much science fiction fantasy there is. Wow, usually. It's I like should just move in. One. I know. One aisle. All right, here we go. YA, teen fantasy, and adventure. Look at all this YA, Tiernan. Look at all of it. Look at all. Of Excuse me while I just live here for the rest of my life. There's nothing like more satisfying than just seeing all of the spines of new books. Just touching them. <laughs> Touch all the spines. <laughs> So many new books out in the wild. We got Life Exit by Jay Kristoff. And look, Mask of Shadows. I've never even heard of this, but it looks, based off the cover, something that I would be very, very interested in. What is this Delirium cover? Wait, do they need a new cover? Yeah, I've never oh, seen this. where's the face? Yeah. Where are we gonna do the face where's Instagrams? The... There it is. It's basically the exact same thing. <laughs> Fangirl moment. Look, they've released new covers for these Tamara Pierce books. Trickster's Choice and Trickster's Queen. These are so cool. I just bought them in the old covers and I have all the regret now. Because they match Tempest and Slaughter. Ugh. We found oh. it. We found the Epic Reads table. Look at all these summer reads dough. Oh, <gasps> Thunderhead. My baby. There's so many good books. Okay, I really need to get down to business, Tiernan. I need to find some books. I need to buy. To, okay, okay. There's two much. Six of Crows. I mean, look at this. Like, Six of Crows. Raven Boys. I Am the Messenger. Darkest Minds. Like, all these are so amazing. Jane Unlimited, I still need to read you. Did you find something? Oh my gosh. Six of Crows. Like, this is still sitting on my coffee table. Like, you haven't read Six of Crows part. yet? I've read, um, about this much of it. You need to get your life together, Tiernan. I know. I know. What? Unexpected sequel. I'm excited about Gentleman's Guide. This is so good. Yeah. Did you read it? Mm -hmm. oh, I actually didn't read it. <laughs> Update. <laughs> Things are getting a little out of hand. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Update. Like, um, this looks good. I'm just, like... <laughs> just gonna grab that. 
<laughs> I'm resisting all temptation right now. I'm doing better. We have, a, we have this Hamilton and Peggy, and Peggy. A revolutionary friendship. Oh my gosh. I've made advice forever. Oh. Tiernan, have you read Fallen Kingdoms? Fallen Kingdom? Yeah. No. Oh. Have you read Psych have you read Psych yet? Psych no. What are you doing? Why are you doing this? To me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking I should get one contemporary novel. Because it is summertime and I've only picked you... up like fantasy. <laughs> that was supposed to be a really like <laughs> Excuse me ma'am, are you finding everything okay? Um I feel like there's judgment raining up against your neck. Let me take my stack. None! Just let me know if I can help you find anything. I've made tearing it into my pack mule. <laughs> My arms got tired, so I was like, do you mind holding these for me for a second? Just checked out, and look how big this bag is. Oh my god, I can't even lift it with my weak arms. Haul incoming. I just gotta get this bag home somehow on the train. I might have to take an Uber, honestly. Hi guys, I am officially home with all of my books. Oh my goodness, I got so many books. Something just came over me and I was just like, I need that, I need that, I need that, I need that, I need all of you. I ultimately ended up buying um, all of the books off of the Evergreens table, which was awesome. And by the way, be sure to check out your own local Barnes & Noble to see the table because it has so many amazing options from like, so many different authors and publishers like it is a true collection of just great summer reads recommendations i actually got so many books i'm gonna set up my big camera and film a haul with that because i think it'd be a lot easier to see and talk about the books that way but oh my gosh i had such a lovely day with tiernan and by the way if you guys like these book shopping vlogs let me know and i'll definitely film more in the future because Clearly, I love book shopping, and when I do it in person, I have very little self-control. So yeah, okay, I'm gonna start the haul now, so check you soon. Hey guys, I'm in my normal filming location so I can show you all of the books I bought. I got quite the array of books. I've got some books to reread, I've gotten some brand new releases that I've been highly anticipating, and I got some brand new books that I I'm just excited to read. They just caught my eye and I was like, I am gonna pick that up that I honestly didn't know much about, which I feel like is always the exciting combination of books when you go in store book shopping. So let me just start by grabbing the first book on top. <laughs> the first book I'm gonna talk about is Heartless by Marissa Mayer. I've obviously read the Ludo Chronicles a long while ago and really enjoyed them. And this one really piqued my interest when I first saw it come out. This is an Alice in Wonderland retelling, but it honestly sounds very unique and very different than other retellings of this same story that I've read before. This follows our main character, Catherine, who is one of the most desired ladies in all of Wonderland. However, she has her own interests. She wants to open up her own bake shop, which literally sold me right on that line. There's something about food and YA in a fantasy setting that always sells me, especially when it has to do with baking. I just love reading about characters baking. If that's weird, I'm sorry, but I just love it, okay? And also, the, th the thought of like a fantastical bake shop, like really, what more could I ask for? The next book I picked up was one that I've actually never heard of, but I saw it and read the synopsis and it hooked me immediately, and that is A Little Too Bright by Samuel Miller. This book sounds truly incredible and very, very, very interesting. It follows our main character, Arthur Lewis Pullman III, and he lives in the shadow of the first Arthur Pullman, who was a great American writer. Grandfather actually passed away a week after he disappeared in Ohio. His father struggled with dementia near the near end of his life, and what happened in that week before he passed away is a mystery. At the beginning of the story, Arthur III's life is kind of crumbling. He loses his academic scholarship, and he goes and lives with his aunt and uncle in Ohio. There he stumbles upon his grandfather's journal, and he begins to read it, and there's a lot of mysteries in this novel as well, and it kind of hints at at what happened in the last week of his grandfather's life. From there, he departs on a cross-country train ride uh, where he basically uses the journal as clues to try to figure out what happened. This sounds like first part family drama, two-part mystery. I love the element of a journal and this cross-country train ride that we'd follow. This just sounds very unique, and I am very, very, very curious 
to see what happens in this novel. The next book I picked up is a reread for me, and that is Unwind by Neil Schusterman. This is very bright. Let me lower this for you. And this would be a reread for me. I feel like I have been flying through Neil Schusterman's books in the year 2018, and I have read Unwind, the three books in this quartet, uh, a long time ago, in middle school specifically, in early high school, and loved them. And I feel like, with such luck I'm having with rereading Neil Schusterman's books, I wanted to re-pick up the series because I no longer own it and give it a reread. I set in a world where abortion is illegal and parents can choose to have their children unwound for parts up until the age of 17. And it follows two kids who have been chosen for different reasons to be unwound and their flight for their lives as they basically try to escape the government. This book is really good. I remember loving it and I honestly don't remember too much of what happened and I really want to re-read this whole series and so I saw the first one and I immediately picked it up plus I'm really loving these new covers they're quite bold next up is a book that sold me with the cover because it's beautiful and that is the Hazelwood by Melissa Albert I mean seriously look at this and this just sounds like a whimsical fantasy novel which as we all know is right up my alley my favorite thing to read and this follows our main character Alice who has spent most of her life with her mother on the road with bad luck constantly biting at their heels but at the beginning of the story when Alice's grandmother a reclusive author passes away they revisit the family estate the Hazelwood there they start to read their grandmother's stories and their bad luck turns worse when Alice's mother is kidnapped by some of the characters that seem to be in Alice's grandmother's tales. From there, she stumbles upon a warning from her grandmother that says, stay away from the, ha the hazel wood. This just sounds like a dark fantasy novel that's kind of like fairy tales coming to life, which are always some of my favorite to read, and I'm super pumped about this novel. It just sounds dark and magical and mysterious, so yay. The next book I picked up was The Queen Rising by Rebecca Ross. And yes, another fantasy novel I saw it and I was like, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This follows our main character, Brianna, who has two goals in life, to master her passion and get chosen by a patron. She lives in a magical world where there are essentially five passions, are art, music, dramatics, wit, and knowledge. And when you basically find mastery in one of these passions, you're chosen by a patron, and that's kind of how your life unfolds from there. At the beginning of the story, our main character, Brianna, is struggling to find her passion and ultimately settles on knowledge. But her worst fears come true when she's not selected by a patron. For months later, her life takes an unexpected toll when a disgraced lord chooses her as her patron and she begins to kind of get thrown headfirst in the politics and the mystery that's surrounding this lord. I just think this book sounds very interesting. The concept of these five passions kind of being the center of this magical world combined with the patron pupil system, which is a very interesting historical twist that I think just sounds really, really interesting. This sounds like it might have some romance and lots of political intrigue, which are my like my favorite things. Plus, again, this cover called to me. What can I say? The next book I got called to me immediately when I saw it. Tiernan tried to take it from me, but I refused to give it up. And that is Hamilton and Peggy, A Revolutionary Friendship. And this is by L.M. Elliot. And I mean, this is like a Hamilton story. I love Hamilton. I know all the words. So when I saw that there's a Y Hamilton story, I said yes. And this basically allows us to relive the tumultuous years of the revolution war through the eyes of Peggy. So I feel like we hear about Peggy from Hamilton, but we get a full story and perspective of what was going on through her eyes. And I think that's really, really interesting because we only really have an and Peggy moment in the musical, so we don't really know much about Peggy. So I, I think it's really amazing that she gets her own story. I'm excited to learn all about Peggy. The next book I picked up was Bruja Born by Zoraida Cordova, and this is the second book in the Brooklyn Bruja series. This is the same author, and the first novel in this series is Labyrinth Lost, which I read a few years ago and I really, really enjoyed. It's a Spanish-inspired fantasy novel that was incredibly unique and just so fast paced, I really, really liked it. So when I saw that there's another book set in kind of the same magical world, I was immediately sold. And this says, and this is also what sold me, three sisters, one spell, countless 
dead. And this follows our main character, Lula, who feels like an outsider. Her sister's newfound powers have wounded her in ways that she's unexpected, and even though she has healing powers herself, it doesn't really seem like it can heal the wound that she feels with her sister. The only place she finds solace is with her boyfriend. However, at the beginning of the story, there is a tragic bus crash that kills many students in her class, including her boyfriend. And this sends our main character, Lula, on a journey to basically confront and reverse death. This just sounds super good. Again, I loved the first one. I think the magic is really unique and very, very interesting. And I feel like this just sounds kind of creepy. One way or another, death always collects. Like, sounds good. Next book I picked up was Invictus by Ryan Groudon. I'm a huge fan of Ryan Groudon's Wolf by Wolf series. So when I saw this novel in Barnes & Noble, I immediately wanted to pick it up. Plus the catch line, the future's hope is in the past also sounded very interesting. This sounds so good. This follows our main character, Gaius, who was born on the outskirts of time. He's the son of a time traveler and a Roman gladiator. And all he's ever wanted to do is basically travel history on his own time and just kind of see and experience things. However, when he fails like the government time traveling test, he turns to the black market and basically becomes like a black market time traveler. I don't know, time travel tropes are some of my favorite in YA, especially when it involves a lot of different historical time periods. As a history nerd, this just sounds so cool and I am really excited to pick it up. Next up is a book that I already own, but I just thought the paperback version of this was beautiful and it is Ruta Sepedi's Salt to the Sea. And um, yes, this is a book I've been meaning to read for a very long time. I've read Sh Between Shades of Grey by this author and absolutely loved it. It was incredibly emotional and very, very moving. And this, I believe, is another historical fiction, World War II novel that is of the same vein. Very emotional, very moving, but very necessary to read. And this follows the forgotten tragedy that was apparently six times deadlier than the Titanic. I believe this follows four different perspectives of four different characters, all from different homelands, hoping to find safety on this boat in the midst of a war. And we follow their lives and the unfortunate story that follows this ship. I have been meaning to read this book for forever and I feel like it's going to be this summer. And I especially just love this paperback version and I, bought it. And the last book I picked up would be another reread for me and that is Shatter Me by Tahira Mafi. I owned this whole trilogy and unfortunately in the move between uh, Texas to Chicago lost this trilogy. And with Restore Me that came out, I want to read that book but I feel like I need to reread the original trilogy first because I honestly do not remember anything that happened in this book series except Warner and how much I loved it. So I decided to re-pick up the first novel so I could give it a reread and obviously this I feel like I'll fly through. This follows our main character Juliet who is in this kind of dystopian landscape world. In the beginning of the story she's trapped in prison because her touch literally kills people immediately. Again, loved the story. I want to read Restore Me, need to reread Shatter Me, and I know I'll fly through this, so I need to pick this up. And now I have it. Alrighty guys, those are all the books I picked up on the shopping visit. I know, it was a lot of them. Please try not to judge me too much. But again, check out the Epic Reads table at your local Barnes & Noble. There's so many amazing books. I had such a hard time not buying everything. I mean, I basically bought everything, but like, I could have bought more things if I, um, you know, didn't exercise my endless amounts of self-control. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys soon with another video and another vlog soon. Bye!